Hello and welcome everybody. It is your boy, King Demps. And uh, today I woke up and I thought to myself, analysis, right? Numbers, statistics, insight, genius. I thought, I don't want any of that today. Fuck that noise. I want some good old fashioned fluff content. I want some bullshit. So that's what I'm recording for you guys. I'm doing a CSGO map tier list, right? Yeah, I know. I'm pretty excited too. Now, the rules for this tier list, very simple, right? We've got all the maps for CSGO down here, right? These are all of the maps that have been in the competitive pool. I think in total, right? In the entirety of the game, we've got everything here, right? We've got Virgo, we've got Train, Overpass, Nuke, Inferno, Dust Tomb, Mirage, Cobble. The version of Cobble I played, which was the later version of Cobble. Uh, ancient. Is that Ancient? Yeah, that is Ancient. It looked like uh, Aztec for a minute. Not that much crap. And, of course, Cash. Now, the rules for this tier list are, like I say, pretty simple. We've got the maps. I am going to be looking at whichever version of the map I preferred. Usually, honestly, I've been down with the latest versions of all the maps. Like, I'm, I can't, I don't, looking at this list, I don't think there's a single map where I'm going to be like, oh, I, I like, I preferred an older version. I know a lot of people liked the older version of Cobble, but I never played the original, original version. So I played the version where they changed B plat a bit, obviously, but I never played the OG Cobble. So, not going to comment on that. But yeah. That is basically it. Oh, and um, we're going to be looking at the maps both from an esports perspective, i.e. watching the pros play them and playing them yourself. So we're going to consider both aspects. I might uh, later do like, you know, because this fluff content, it's kind of fun. It's kind of easy to do. I might uh, later do like a tier list just for playing them, a tier list just for watching them. Maybe do a tier list of just the current map pool. But for now, this is the one definitive, all of them let's go okay so we're gonna just do them in the order that they've shown up uh and the first one i'm showing is cash Cache. where does Cache go okay so my initial thoughts are that cash is a high b tier map now i look at cash in a very similar way to how i look at dust 2 i think it's fundamentally at its core a pretty well designed map I think it plays well. I think it's good to watch. I think there is a good mix of all the aspects that make a CS Go map good. There's a bit of verticality in there. You've obviously got boost. You've obviously got this bit of mid here. So there's a bit of levels in there. You've got heaven at B. You've got a catwalk or whatever you call it over at A. So we've got some verticality in there, right? That's important. I think verticality done well is good. Um, we've got the classic three-laned approach, right? So we've got a lane that goes towards B, a, a, a lane that is the middle, and a lane that goes towards A. You've got some interesting, unique aspects to this map, actually. Squeaky door, that's kind of interesting. I personally don't like playing squeaky. I know that there's players out there who fucking love on the T side to lurk squeaky door, and that's like their thing, and their fucking whole life is lurking that position. I hate that. I think that plays like shit, but, you know whatever floats your boat i think the the problem that this map suffers from and this is the same as i think at least one probably two other maps in the pool all right and we will get to them later is it's just a bit overplayed and this is the general problem with the csgo map pool right is that we don't get enough rotation all of these maps here haven't seen cobble in ages obviously haven't seen train in ages if we brought those maps in added like one or two more and rotated them more often, I think that'd be good for the game. And that's just a general point I want to put right early on in the video. We need a bit more rotation in the map pool, I think, because the maps get a little bit stale because we play them so much and so often. So yeah, that is a problem I think with Cash. However, I think it plays pretty well. I think it's pretty... It was pretty good to watch pros play if a little bit limited in the way it plays i think a little bit limited in the way that it plays there aren't as many take overpass for example which we'll get to later 
you can see like a round playing out a million different ways on overpass on cash maybe that number's only half a million you know just a little bit more limited in the way the map plays um i really like in general how t side and ct plays generally attacking any area of the map except squeaky door don't like going squeaky door as t but like i like you know trying to work out a main i like trying to take mid control and play mid i like you know going b pretty much on either side damn the more i talk about this the more i feel like i should bump it the more i feel like i should bump it no for now it's gonna stay top of the b tier I like cash. I've seen some great games on it. For a great pro game, I'm going to try and do at least one of these for each of the maps. I'm going to try and tell you a great pro game to go and watch. Um, MLG X Games Aspen. I think it's the semi-finals. Fnatic played Nip in an incredible series. The whole series was good. Recommend that. I think it's 2015 or 2014 MLG X Games Aspen. Somewhere around there. Late 2014, early 2015. I want to say something like that. Maybe late 2015 even. I don't know. It's one of those two years. Um, but yeah, they Fnatic and Nip played a cash on that map, uh, cash in that series, really, really good. Great example of a good pro game on cash for you to go and watch and see why I like this map. I'm going to put it at the top of B tier for now. It might get moved later depending on where other stuff goes. Next up, we have the newest map in the pool. This is a placement again that's going to be for now. It might change later. I think if I was doing this purely based on watching pros play the map, I would put it down here. Because I think the meta on Ancient is pretty dire right now in the pro scene. If you start T side, you're basically fucked. The T side on Ancient at the moment in the highest levels of play is a fucking disaster. Most T sides are lucky to get like three or four rounds some games you'll randomly see each t side get like six or seven and that's just because both teams are a bit like <sighs> because the map is so new you still get those weird outlier games where like you know the teams go completely opposite to the statistics and what normally happens on the map and and suddenly both teams are winning their t halves you still get that happening sometimes because it's a newer map so it's a bit more inconsistent the reason I actually put it in B is because I think it's nice to play. I really enjoy playing this map, you know, in matchmaking, whatever. When you go out and actually play the map, it's fun to play. There's a lot of variety of different angles. I think A is is kind of a bit boring just because you have to really get donut control or like control of red room or whatever to kind of split A. And so working A in your sort of like matchmaking or face it games whatever can be a bit boring can be a bit dull but in general i think the map plays pretty well it's quite fun i think on both sides again i think it's pretty fun to play maybe a little bit less fun on t side because if you're playing you know a pleb game face it or matchmaking with your mates it, it can be a bit hard to be coordinated and take mid and you need a little bit of coordination to take mid control I still believe that the meta on this map is not fully developed. I don't think the T sides need to be as bad as they are. And I think teams probably aren't fully utilizing the potential of T side. I think there is a lot of stuff you can do on T side. There's a lot of room you get as terrorists. There's a lot of different ways to kind of approach different bomb sites and split. I think the map is still not fully understood yet. I think we still need more time on this one. And I think this map will get better at the pro level. I think a team is going to like crack this map, particularly the T side of it. And that is when we're going to see like the meta explode and people playing the map more and it, you know, getting more developed. But I know a lot of people hate this map, especially a lot of commentators and analysts and stuff don't like this map at the moment. I agree from the point of view of the way it tends to play. Like if you start on T side, you're probably screwed, which makes it almost impossible to pick the map because then you'll get put on T side. So yeah, Ancient's a weird one right now in the pro scene, but it's fun to play. I think the pro meta will develop on it. I don't think it's that bad. I still think it's relatively entertaining to watch, even when T-Sides do only get three rounds, because it's it. there's something fun about having at least one map in the pool where that's the dynamic of like, oh, are the T's going to get anything done? I think that is actually kind of a fun dynamic to have on at least one map in the pool. So yeah, I'm okay with Ancient. It's going to go in sort of like mid to low B tier for now. Okay, so at the Katowice play-in, Fnatic played big on Ancient. It was an overtime game. It was close. 
go and watch that one. That one was pretty decent, pretty fun. Can recommend. Next up, we have Cobble. <sighs> Cobble always had the problem, right? And this is referring to the pro scene. Cobble always had the problem of being... Drop was just too important, right? It was a piece of map control that was really hard to contest for the terrorists. It was a really key rotation point on the map. It's very hard to get anyone in there without anybody knowing, obviously because you hear the sound when they drop. Just generally, that was the problem part of the map that was hard to balance, hard to... I think that was probably the part of the map that needed to change. I think there needed to be a way to get into drop, I get down drop without making sound, even if you had to invest time. So maybe stick like a ladder in there or make it, make it so that it's like kind of risky to take. You need to be sure that no one's going to like swing out and shoot you. But yeah, that was always the problem with Cobble. Other than that, it was actually an okay, like pretty decent map to watch. As for playing Cobble, I didn't play that much Cobble when it was out, but it was always fine. It was always pretty fun. I actually think it was quite fun on the T side because there's lots of space and you could kind of just, everyone could go and like default and lurk. It was one of those maps that was lots of big open space that you could kind of work at your own pace. So it was like kind of quite fun in that way. But I think, I think Cobble kind of falls in the same category as Ancient in that especially watching pro games it didn't quite play correctly i think for the pros i think there were there were like some subtle issues with the map that a couple of adjustments to the map so i think this is kind of the same for ancient i think a couple of subtle adjustments and the map will play way better just straight out of the gates so it's gonna go b tier low to mid b tier definitely worth some problems with it i know a lot of people want to see cobble back and that's actually a map a lot of people talk about when we're talking about bringing a map back into the pool, I think with a few adjustments, we probably will see Cobble at some point again in the future. As for a good Cobble game to watch, just got to double check this. It was a major final. I'm, I'm just I'm just looking it up on my, my phone right now. Uh, it was a major final. It was one of the earliest major finals, and it was Nip versus Fnatic. The final of ESL1 Cologne 2014, Nip versus Fnatic. It was the major nip one. Cobble was the first map played in it. Go and check that one out. That's a good Cobble game to watch. Iconic stuff. It was the major nip one. Nip dominated the start of the game and only managed to win one major. Reached the final of like the first four or five in a row. Go and watch it. It's it's an important piece of Counter-Strike history. All right. Mirage. Oh, God. I'm, I'm going to piss some people off here. Some, so, right, this is going to be the one. I reckon this is going to be one that will be my most controversial placement. Now, hear me out. I understand you B anchors out there, right? Who basically spend the whole game on CT, either bored out of your fucking mind because nobody comes to the B site, or staring at a white screen. I understand the problem. I really do. However... I think a couple of developments in the meta on Mirage have made anchoring the B site a lot easier. I think people have found better crossfires with the player on short, coming close, playing under the window while somebody sits in forest. You know, those type of crossfires, I think they've developed and people play them better. Also, I think that little smoke that you throw sort of between the corner of the pillar and van, you know, you, you know the smoke I'm talking about if you're a B player on Mirage. That smoke has become way more common to throw. And I think that giving you some space at bench to play around the pillars to, if you want, even a lot of the time you can fall all the way back to kitchen. That has made anchoring B, which was the big problem, I think, on Mirage. The biggest problem was anchoring B. That felt like shit and was shit to play from CT and kind of shit to watch, like, on pro games. Watching B hits was kind of dull. That is better now. I think Mirage is one of the most fundamentally well-designed maps. I think every bit of the map plays really nicely. No matter whether you're like the Palace Lurk or you're a CT pushing Palace, for example, you can play aggressive on both bomb sites and push for info and push for entries, or you can play passive as CT. 
you can play a very default heavy style as T. You can play gimmicky and play off spawns. It kind of has a little bit of everything, and I think it, it plays well no matter what play style, no matter what you want to go for. I think Mirage again suffers from being a bit stale. Definitely a problem. But outside of, of just being played for so long and not really having any changes, I, I just think it's a really good map. It's really well designed. It's really fun to play on CT and T. T can be a bit of a pain in like you know matchmaking face it when the economy's down in the dumps a little bit and the ct economy is really good so they got all the nades and it, they kind of can stop the gimmicks and you're just running into a wall it, it can feel a bit like it's one of those maps on t side i feel like you can run into the wall and just have no idea how to get around and you can just get absolutely blasted on t side because you know just nothing's working for you it's just one of those maps it feels really it's just one of those maps where it feels like it happens a lot where the CTs just put up a wall. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I, I just suck. Now, good game to watch on Mirage. FaZe versus G2, the grand final of IAM Katowice. They played a barnstormer of a Mirage game. It had everything. It was one of those games that is a perfect advert, in my opinion, for why Mirage is a great map to have in the pool. Great to watch. Great to play. Mirage lover right here baby does too this is going to be another controversial one dust two is going at the bottom of my a tier i know i've probably with those two placements mirage and dust two in the a tier i have probably completely ruined all of my credibility with the majority of you in in a lot of your eyes i understand that i don't give a fuck you're all wrong i am master of the maps so the reason Dust 2 gets in there, again, same as I think these three, Cash, Mirage and Dust 2 are like, if you want to look at CSGO map design and what makes it work, I think these three are the iconic maps for that. Designed around the concept of three lanes. One goes to A, one goes to B, one plays in mid, they interconnect. It is the iconic pug map. If you want to get Russian aimed, if you want to fucking play in like DMG matchmaking or like LE matchmaking and come up against some fucking Russian kid with an anime profile pick whose aim is way better than DMG or LE and he just pops your head every time, go play some Dust 2. That is the map to find those people on. The main reason, again, I think that it is so lambasted and lamented by a lot of the community is because it's stale it's just been played too much with very little changes i for one i'm a fan of the mid changes i thought that was fucking bullshit as a ct to have to burn a smoke to cross over to b or have to burn a nade for example to cross over to b and still probably get tagged about half the time anyway. It was fucking nonsense. It was shit gameplay. And it was a good thing that Valve made those changes. Uh, you can still kind of do the same thing as a T if you want to. You just now have to take some sort of risk. It's a more even peak the CT can get there by the time you're set up. Like It's just way better balanced and plays way better now, in my honest opinion. And I think it's better to watch as well. The reason, again, I like Dust 2 is it has lots of gimmicks. It, it teaches you gimmicky gameplay. It can teach you very slow standard default gameplay. And it's just hella fun to watch. Like, I think it's hella fun to watch pro games on it because it's very brawly. It can be very fast paced. It can be very aim heavy. It can be very reliant on individual plays like somebody just swinging out long and getting some kills or, you know, somebody just running out mid doors and getting entries. It, it just lends itself to high octane gameplay both to play and to watch as for a great dust 2 game wait did i do that for mirage yeah i've done that for all of them so far haven't i yeah yeah, yeah. okay i'm just i'm researching a good dust 2 game for y'all all right chill right we're, go we're, we're gonna go i reckon we're gonna go for a navi game here right navi are like the dust 2 team all right, I was, I, I'm was. i going to be sat here for too long if I spend too long looking for a good Dust 2 game. Probably, probably could have done this bit before I did the tier maker, if I'm honest. Could, could have done the research first, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fluff content, guys. It's a bit of fun. But what I'm going to go for is I'm going to go for the previous ESL Pro League that Na'Vi won over Vitality in the first game 
or in the first map, sorry, of that series. Electronic puts on a fucking clinic on Dust 2. 111 ADR, 30 kills in a 16-10 game. Go and watch that. That's the one. Bam. Inferno. First S tier. Clap time. Now, the reason Inferno gets an S tier should be pretty obvious to everyone. I think generally it is agreed to be the best map in the pool it is an absolutely iconic cs map basically existed in pretty much the same form throughout the history of counter-strike it's just fundamentally so beautifully designed to its core it is an amazing map to watch pro play on and it is pretty fun to play i really like playing banana on ct don't know why don't know exactly what it is about the gameplay of that that feels really fun to me but it just does we've seen just so many iconic battles on this map like honestly it it's actually difficult to like i'm gonna have a hard time picking a single map to be the one that everybody goes and watches on this because there's just so many iconic inferno games and yeah shout out to one of the most celebrated one of the most enjoyed one of the favorite maps of the csgo community big ups to you inferno you are wicked oh one thing i can't remember if i've said but the battles that we see between in-game leaders on this map is a really really interesting dynamic i think this is a massive in-game leader map where you can kind of treat it like a chessboard and 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 play like that play off rotations gamble stacks and stuff you know watching cadian for example and nafany for example in the current meta and carrigan again for example all of those like current in-game leaders watching them like go to work and have the battle of the minds on inferno is amazing it's amazing to watch inferno one of the best maps in any shooter game ever made like such a good map cannot understate how good inferno is right so the inferno i want you to go and check out is from the esl one cologne 2019 the semi-finals between astralis and vitality i believe it's the second map of that series go and check it out it was awesome overtime mad plays from everyone both teams play the map incredibly it's one of the best infernos i've ever seen go and watch it now we've got nuke I'm not sure how this one's going to be received, right? Actually, because... Okay, so I think Nuke is pretty doo-doo to play on T side, just in general. I don't think it's very fun. I think playing outside on T side is kind of fun. I think if you're, like, playing in lobby, if you're playing towards ramp, it kind of sucks. Doesn't feel very fun to play. I think the T side of that map just generally feels kind of dog shit to play unless you're playing in like organized team play. Admittedly, the map I've played not the most of out of a lot of these, but yeah, I've never particularly enjoyed T side nuke. CT side nuke can be okay. Again, I think it's more fun to play outside. I think playing inner can be pretty dull if the opposing team just stops ever hitting inner. That will just happen where teams are like, nope, we're not coming through that door or fucking heart ever just never coming through those so yeah i think the main one for me on this is that i don't think nuke is super fun to play i've never had much fun playing it but i also think it's not the most engaging to watch sometimes because i think on the t side it can be yeah not the most dynamic map it's often just like you know a ton of people sit in lobby or outside ramp you have like one maybe or two lurking outside and like a lot of the rounds are just gonna look like that yeah i think if you're one of the better nuke teams there's like vent dives there's stuff going down secret there's throwing the smokes and using that as a mind game have you gone down secret have you not there are ways and interesting approaches to the map and the map doesn't always have to be boring to play i just think it is a lot of the time yeah just not my favorite map nuke just not my favorite map i don't even think it's like atrocious the main reason i put it in c tier is because otherwise i'm gonna have like fuck all in c tier but also i just i just yeah i don't think it's quite as fun and dynamic as some of the other maps it's okay though it's not terrible old older versions of nuke i think have been pretty fucking poopoo caca 
But, you know, as you can see, the doo-doo caca category. But yeah, nu this version of Nuke isn't that bad. And honestly, like, you know, you could kind of do this. And then, you know, you can probably do this. In fact, I think with the current state of Ancient, I think this is probably more fair. I think this is probably fairer. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. Ancient is going to... Uh, but I think the potential... I think the potential of Ancient is like, it could be up here somewhere. I think current Ancient is like, yeah, not good. So I think this is, is, is more fair. I think I'm going to uh, I'm gonna hold my hands up and be like, yes, I'm probably a little bit biased because I actually kind of like Ancient. But this is fair. As for the iconic nuke game to watch, I'm just going to tell you to go and watch the last major final. PGL Stockholm. I blanked for a minute. I literally blanked. It was the first major we had in like ages and I fucking forgot about it. But yeah, go and watch the uh, nuke from that grand final. Obviously, iconic moment, uh, very iconic particular moment in that. But in general, it was a fun nuke to watch. It was a good nuke to watch. Just, yeah, go check that one out. It's good fun. This is probably personal bias. I think objectively, Overpass is one of the best maps. I think I, I would question anybody who would put it below A tier. I would question them overpass is is so fun it's so dynamic it's so unique in the way it's designed and the way it feels to play it i think is one of the maps that gives the most individual agency and freedom to make plays i think if you watch for example a team like ents on this map they embody i think that giving players personal responsibility to make plays to backstab to take map control to get information and it, it's just such a beautiful map i i fucking love overpass i think overpass overpass is by far my favorite map to play it is again by far one of my favorite maps to watch i think the meta is developed really interestingly at different times on overpass yeah just an absolute banger just an absolute banger of a map i fucking rate this map very highly now the overpass that i'm going to tell you to go and watch is all the way back from 2017 pgl major krakow gambit versus astralis just an iconic uh overpass from sort of csgo history obviously that gambit run to the major title with zeus in-game leading just an iconic piece of csgo history but there was a really fun map it was a map where Gambit as underdogs won. It was a map where Mo, the AWPer for Gambit, who severely outclassed by Device, if you look at their careers as a whole, out orped Device handily on this map. Mo played out of his fucking mind. He played the game of his life. It was the one game where I looked at Mo as an AWPer and was like, oh my god, this is why people think he's a good AWPer. Like, if he can play the odd game like this, yeah, go and watch that one. It's a good one. PGL Major Krakow, 2017. Now... I was not that disappointed to see Train leave the pool. I don't think Train is the most dynamic and interesting map to watch or play. I think it suffers from some of the same problems as Nuke in that I think in a dynamic team environment, i.e. you know, a group of five players all communicating, all tryharding to some degree, it's a lot more watchable and a lot more playable. I think on CT side, it fucking sucks to play this map in like matchmaking or face it because the CT side of this map should be getting like 10 rounds if your team are coordinated, if they communicate properly and if you rotate properly. If not, it, it's a map that becomes pure fucking chaos and degenerates into like an A map in Yard. It just often degenerates into that. Yeah, it could become a bit of a mess in like you know uncoordinated solo queue whatever type play watching pros play this game yeah i don't know i don't know there have been times when the game uh, the the map has been interesting like i'm thinking prime sk era they played a lot of this map and like watching fallen bounce around on the fucking ladders with his orb like pinging about like a fucking pikachu on cocaine yeah that was kind of cool and fun to watch but in general i think the map is is quite CT heavy. 
yeah, I don't know. It just ends up being a bit dull. It, it, it ends up being like a game of cricket, right? Where if you appreciate and understand and really nerd out on the fine nuances of Counter-Strike, like timings, utility usage, manipulating rotations, stuff like that, the, the very little subtleties and nuances, then Train can be a great map for that. But I think if you're trying to capture the core essence of what CSGO should be about, which is that kind of like a mix of that subtle, careful, cerebral, considered play, and then the more explosive, aim-heavy, you know, visceral gameplay, I think Train and Nuke fall a little bit short in capturing the balance right. I think they sometimes become maps that are a little bit too much about the nuances and manipulating rotations and stuff like that, and they kind of, you lose some of the more immediate and visceral stuff that makes CSGO the best esport, in my opinion, and the best game, um, you know, best competitive game to play as well. Right, I've got you a train game. We're going to go with the classic SK Gaming. I think they're, in my mind, one of the iconic train teams. And the grand final of Epicenter 2017, they played against the classic Virtus Pro lineup, the one that a lot of early CSGO fans remember very fondly. Always fun to watch that SK and that Virtus Pro go head-to-head, -head, but they play an OT train game in that grand final. It's a best of five, just a great series to go back and watch. Went all the way back and forth. Really good series. Um, that's like a classic CSGO matchup, that Virtus Pro versus that SK. So can recommend that one on train. Go and check it out. And it's, it's, it's appropriate that we've saved this map for last. It's crap. This, this map is fucking dog, and I will not hear otherwise. Almost every round looks the same when you watch it. Almost every round plays so fucking chaotically in, like, matchmaking, face city type games. It doesn't play anything like it looks in pro play, unless, I guess, I imagine, unless you get to sort of the upper echelons of, like, face it games, unless you face it level 10. Maybe in those games it looks and plays something like a pro game, but, you know... I think it's it, it more often not degenerates into a complete fucking farce in matchmaking and face it. So I think the map's just shit to play. I think it's one of those maps that's just... It's so different from the other maps. It it requires, like, good utility usage and stuff from the CTs to make it play like it should. It requires just good utility usage in general to make it play like it should when you watch pro games. But watching pro games, man, every round looks the fucking same. Every round looks the same. You just go A... Just fight on ramp every single fucking round, pretty much, and go A, like, 90% of the time. Occasionally go B, occasionally do a mid-split, but those are late in the rounds, 9 times out of 10. Like, about 80% of vertigo rounds look the same. It's a fucking crap map. It, it, not only do 80% of the rounds look the same, those rounds don't look good. They're fucking shit to watch. They're boring. It's just smokes fucking galore all over ramp. The T's wait out all of the fucking utility at ramp, and then they go and put all their fucking utility round. There's just walls of smokes everyone's fucking spamming through, and then you just play a retake. It's so garbage poop-ap. It is fucking awful, that map. I hate it with a passion. It's crap. It's terrible. It's awful. It's really bad. Really bad. If you are somebody who, who thinks Vertigo is good, I worry for you. I worry for you. I worry for the people around you because one day you're going to murder and eat them because you're a psycho. If you like Vertigo, you're a psycho. That is it, folks. That's the that's the tier list. That's the I'm not giving you a good pro game to watch on Vertigo, by the way, because there aren't any. There are there are no good pro games. They're all fucking poo. I hate them. I hate having to watch that map. It's so bad. Please get it out of the pool, please. We'll just do a quick recap from top to bottom. Overpass, just one of the most unique maps. So many different ways rounds can play out. Just a beautifully well-designed map. Love it. Inferno, the classic, I think, CSGO map. You know, just so many banger pro games on it. Everybody knows how to play it and matchmaking face it. It's just fun, well-designed map to the core. This is probably like, if Overpass is CSGO's like, kind of out there map it's a little bit different a little bit funky a little bit unique inferno is like the csgo formula down to a t beautiful map mirage 
I think overhated because it's overplayed, just just oversaturated with Mirage games. But I think again, very similar to Inferno and Dust Two and Cash. I think these four are kind of the iconic CS:GO formula for a map and how CS:GO should play, with slightly different, you know, Dust Two a little bit more explosive and aim heavy, Inferno a little bit more rotation and tactics and team play. But yeah, Mirage again, just really fun to play. Dust 2, similar, lots of exciting jewels and stuff you can take, fun gimmicks you can go for. Cash, I think... Cash, I could probably do this or this. I think the reason I've done it this way around is because Cash, personally, I, I it's just overplayed for me. I've played too much of that map. Um, Yeah. That, that's probably the reason I've got these two this way around. I think you could... Mirage, Dust2, and Cash, I can kind of, like, see any fucking order of them around here. Whatever. Cobble, probably a little bit of rose-tinted glasses, but Cobble was fun. It was unique. It was different. And it, it just... I associate with an era of CSGO that I probably have some nostalgia for. That's probably a lot of the reason. When I first started getting into CSGO, Cobble was around, and Cobble was played a lot, and Cobble was talked about a lot. Train and Nuke... Again, I don't actually think they're super terrible maps. I think they don't quite capture what CSGO is supposed to be like for me. And I think they are far better maps for pro play than they are for like matchmaking and face it, where I think they're kind of a bit shit and can be not fun to play and a bit of a mess. Ancient. I don't think Ancient is actually that bad of a map. Actually. I just think it's not understood yet, not fully explored yet. Definitely has some issues at the moment, but with a few like tweaks to the map and then like, um, you know, pro players and teams like, you know, experimenting with it a bit more. And, and I think playing it better, especially on T side, I think Ancient could end up being like a good addition to the pool. I really do. And then, yeah, we won't dwell too much on Vertigo, but crap map. It's just awful. Every round looks the same they're not good it's some of the worst like parts of csgo gameplay all wrapped up into one shitty map also it's fucked that you can just always hear footsteps on this map the fact that the because the maps like stacked on top of each other you can hear footsteps like fucking everywhere it's fucking dumb everyone has to shift walk like it, it's shit it's just bad it's a fucking poorly designed map get it out please remember let me know your own tier list. This is now on Tier Maker. I'll, if I can, I'll provide a link to it so you can go and do your own. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope it generates some discussion. Honestly, even as I'm looking at this tier list, I could probably like move it around. Uh, you know, there's definitely some movements I could I could do on this tier list, but you know, wanted to have a nice even spread of like actually putting, actually having a map in all of the tiers and stuff like that. Like the video comment and tell all of your friends every last one of them not just the ones you like you know even the guys you're like well, i mean they're not really my friend but like i tolerate them yeah even them tell them about me right and if you did not like it you're probably a filthy little vertigo enjoyer aren't you you little cheeky bastard